Accidents happen, but this is no accident. Tonight on Panorama, inside a criminal gang who are ripping off insurance companies. <laughs> to the tune of tens of thousands of pounds. And some of the companies benefiting from text messages trying to get you to make a claim. Certainly not a scam here, Declan, mate. Um, you know, we work alongside around 75 different centres across the UK. As car insurance premiums continue to rise, how insurance companies themselves are complicit in the compensation culture. It is a system which has got dysfunctional and difficult, and we do need to sort it. Meet Chris Berry. He's 18 and he passed his driving test a year ago. Despite appearances, Chris is not a farmer. In fact, he lives here, on this housing estate in Bolton, and gets around on a 1953 Fordson Major tractor. Chris, why do you drive an antique tractor? <laughs> um, there's a lot of reasons, mainly because I can't afford car insurance. I mean, uh, I'm getting quoted like seven to eight thousand pounds for a year's car insurance. So you're forced to drive this, really? Yeah. So how much insurance do you pay on this? Fifty-seven pound a year. That's that's fully comprehensive. Chris has become a victim of a massive rise in motor insurance premiums. One survey found that for young drivers, premiums are up 64 percent in a single year. And for the rest of us, they're up by 40%. So, what's going on? The A414 in Hertfordshire. This lorry driver is about to be involved in an accident with the car in front. The lorry's built-in camera records the whole thing. At first glance, it looks like a real accident. It seems as if the blue car was forced to slow down suddenly and the lorry driver's at fault. But look again. Police now believe that the two cars were working together and that this collision is all part of a conspiracy to claim tens of thousands of pounds from the lorry driver's insurance. It's known as crash for cash. And tackling it has become the focus of the Insurance Fraud Bureau. Around about 30,000 accidents a year are either staged or induced, worth some in the region of £350 million a year, and that's ultimately adding to the cost of insurance for genuine consumers. The Bureau has access to all of the insurance records in the country, and they're using them to map out the crash for cash hotspots. So at the moment, where are the worst places for this? Birmingham is sitting at number one in our hotspots, followed by Sheffield and so, Manchester. We want to get inside a crash for cash gang. And here's how we're going to do it. We've bought this second hand Volvo and we've wired it up with cameras. Our Volvo is going undercover in a crash for cash gang. We've been told about a business called First Standard Accident Claims Limited in Dagenham, Essex. And there, we're introduced to this man, Ghazan Far Sadiq. Soon after we first make contact with him, Sadiq tells us if we have the right paperwork, he'll arrange to have our Volvo damaged. I'm going to change We've been told the fraud works like this. This is our car, and the gang will take it and another car away to a secluded spot and damage them. Then they'll tell the insurance companies that those cars were involved in a real accident but the whole thing will be completely made up. A few weeks later, we're back at the office. There's a new name on the door, FG Rentals, and Sadiq isn't around. But according to this woman, the fraud is still on. 
She's Fatima Haji, the director of FG Rentals Limited and Sadiq's business partner. She tells us when to drop our car off so it can be crashed. Bring it after free because yeah. Thwadi sab ne hari sari team ni aayi thi gaddi karan ke athe ek gaddi pe thi chabi mere ko sab ne gaddi hai. Acha. Aur thikar aayi nahi. Te wo do tin to baad hi aamde ya. Acha. Te shayad ne mujhe aaj hi te. Crash for cash fraud is estimated to add about 40 pounds to all of our premiums. But because so many gangs get away with it, nobody knows for sure. Yet it's only one of the reasons why our car insurance premiums are going up. In fact, the biggest reason for the price hike isn't criminal fraud. It's our compensation culture. In the last five years, we seem to have become addicted to motor insurance claims for personal injury. And at the center of it, is whiplash. There are some estimates of around a thousand whiplash claims being made every day in the UK at the moment, which is significantly more than anywhere else in Europe. And furthermore, each of those people making a claim, on average, was claiming more. Some insurance companies believe that a significant proportion of whiplash claims filed in Britain today may be exaggerated or totally false. For doctors, trying to distinguish between real claims and fake ones isn't easy. Declan. Come yes. Thanks for seeing you. Hi there. How are you doing? Please have a seat there. And first of all, we'll start at the top of the headset. Any problem when I do that? No, that's fine. No, great. I want you to look way up in the air for me. That's extension. And I'll way down forward. Far as Rodney Payton is a leading medical assessor for whiplash. But whiplash doesn't show up on any x-rays or scans. So in the end, it comes down to whether the patient sounds plausible. To say that somebody's lying is very, very difficult. If you tell me right now you've got a sore neck, I have no idea. You tell me you've got a sore neck, I have to accept you say that. So, you have to give me so I look that. underneath that. I give you the benefit of the doubt, and if everything is reasonable, then it's reasonable. This is the heart of the problem with whiplash. Doctors have to give the benefit of the doubt, but when they do, that assessment will become a crucial piece of evidence in paying out a claim. At the moment, we have a situation, don't we, whereby if you tell an insurer that you've got whiplash, they're quite likely to believe that and possibly pay out without any questions asked. The insurers know that if someone presents and they have a medical report that says they got whiplash, then the likelihood is that a court would allow that claim and they, they, fought, they, they work on that basis. So you've really got to address the root cause behind whiplash and how it's identified. And whiplash is on the rise. Four years ago, there were 552,000 personal injury claims arising from car accidents in the UK. Last year, there were 791,000. That's a rise of 43%. It's costing the British insurance industry two billion pounds a year. Insurers are now paying more money out in claims than they're taking in in premiums. So, they're putting up the price of car insurance. Here in Lancashire, these younger drivers say they're reaching the limit of what they can afford. I mean, how much are you paying at the moment? Over two grand. 1,900 quid at the minute. 2,200. 2,200. Um, I'm, I'm on 1,900 this year. 1,900? No, I'm on 3,000. 3,000? 1,900. 1,900. But there's a twist. They might be suffering from our addiction to claims, but they also feel that when it comes to our compensation culture, if you can't beat them, join them. Do you think that we live in a compensation culture at the moment? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Have any of you ever put in a claim? Yeah, I oh, have a micro. Yeah. So the non-fault accident you just told us yeah. about, you did claim for that, for, well, for what? Yeah, um, it was whiplash. But basically because the price they paid out wasn't enough to cover the price of the car. And so. I need to get that money back somehow, don't I? So, so did, you, did you have whiplash? Or did I you, did, yeah. If you were involved in an accident that wasn't your fault, mm. you're probably more likely yeah. to put a claim in for whiplash. Yeah, I'd say so. And do, would you all say that? Is that fairly...? Yeah. Yeah, yeah probably would, yeah. yeah. According to one leading insurance broker, seven years ago, 20% of motor accidents resulted in a personal injury claim. Today, it's 60%. We met some teenagers in Lancashire, he said, if they did have an accident, they'd be quite likely 
to claim. I mean, what is your reaction to that and how do you go about addressing something that has now become uh, almost part of the culture? Well, I agree. I mean, that is a very good example of how it is becoming a cultural as much as a financial issue. So yes, there is a very significant problem here uh, and we have to deal with it. But it's not just that we're more likely to make a claim, it seems we're also becoming more likely to lie about our injuries. A recent survey suggested that one in six people would consider lying or exaggerating in a personal injury claim. Back in Dagenham, we're going to meet the Crash for Cash gang. They're coming up with the lies for a fraudulent insurance claim. They're going to invent whiplash injuries for three phantom passengers. The plan is to claim off our insurance, so we have to take the blame. And to help us understand, he was even happy to draw us a map. This is the piece of paper that Sadiq gave to our undercover reporter and it outlines in precise detail how this accident is supposed to have happened. Now Sadiq has even identified this precise spot in East Ham in East London, about six miles from his office, as where it's supposed to have occurred. And what we're going to tell the insurance company, according to Sadiq, is that our green Volvo came down this road here and overshot this junction and crashed into a Vauxhall Zafira that was coming along here. Now all of this, of course, is completely made up. Sadiq is so confident the claim will go through, he writes us a cheque for £800, a reward for letting him claim on our insurance. Now it's nearly time for him to make his money by organising for the fraudulent claim to be submitted. But there's something he needs to do first. Have a crash. And that's where our trusty undercover Volvo comes in. We've delivered it to the gang. Our cameras will record every time someone gets in the car. We're in a hotel a couple of miles away, keeping tabs on what's happening. We've been told that they will stage the fake accident at some point tonight, but we don't know when. However, we do have some information because we've installed a tracking device on the car. And that tells us that already they've moved it from the business location where we dropped it off to this quiet residential street nearby. So maybe this is where the crash is going to happen. Maybe they'll move it again somewhere else. But what we do know is that our car is on the move. Fraud like this affects us all. But that's not the only thing pushing up our premiums. In fact, it's the system which kicks in around legitimate accidents that really costs us. We've brought a couple of scrap cars together on the side of the road to show how easy it would be to put in a claim if I were really involved in an accident. This is a rear-end shunt, a relatively common everyday accident but the liability here is clear. The fault belongs to this person in the silver car who has crashed into the back of me. And for many people involved in processing my claim, that makes me a very valuable commodity. It all starts with the very first person on the scene, the recovery driver. He knows that I've been involved in an accident that's not my fault. He also knows that companies who process claims, called claims management companies, and personal injury lawyers will be desperate to meet me. And if he introduces me to them, he'll get paid for his trouble. I actually put the claim together for them um, and point them in the direction of somebody who will be able to deal with their claim swiftly and very, very efficiently. So that'll be a claims management company? It could be a claims management company or it could be a personal injury lawyer. And so what do you get out of that? How much will they pay you for making that referral? 
For that referral, we can receive anywhere between £250 and £500. Next, my car will be taken to the car repair body shop. They too may send me to a claims management company. Nick says he does it because they're easier to deal with than insurers and he'll get paid for the referral. On this, if we put you in touch with an accident management company, we'd probably get 100 quid. 100 quid? Yeah. But other, bigger organisations benefit too. After all, referral fees are essentially money paid for information about car crashes. And who has the most up-to-date, live information about all of the car crashes up and down the country? Well, insurance companies. So some insurers are selling the details of their own customers to claims management companies and personal injury lawyers. We asked 15 of Britain's insurance groups if they accept referral fees. 11 replied, 4 said yes, and 4 said they receive a fee from a panel of solicitors. So a significant number of insurers are complicit in the personal injury merry-go-round. I can understand people's concern. Insurers don't sell that data willy-nilly. They don't sell great reams of data. They will only do it when there's been an accident, uh, a crash, when it's, uh, it, it's not been your fault. And I think you would accept that if, if I were to run into the back of you and your car had been damaged and you have been injured, you would want help and you'd want someone to get in touch with you and sort that out. But I could find that help myself. I wouldn't want my insurer to pass my details on. I can understand that, but equally, uh, you would, a lot of people would want to be helped. But it, it, it is a system which has got dysfunctional and difficult, and we do need to sort it. Because the details of accident victims are now so valuable, an entire industry has grown up over the last few years which specialises in finding them. Companies who provide data about accident victims in this way are known in the trade as lead generators. They sell their leads to solicitors and claims management companies. I've had a few of these text messages recently. You might have had them too. They all follow roughly the same format. They'll say something like, our records indicate you may be entitled to £3,750 for the accident you had. And to claim for free, you have to reply claim and to opt out, press stop. But there's nothing on it to say where it's come from, no company name, no telephone number, nothing. And that's just one reason why these messages are breaking regulations. The Information Commissioner's Office confirmed that messages like these are unlawful. So, who's sending them? And are they just spam? Or is there someone behind them who might really process the details of an accident? I began collecting the messages and replied claim to everyone. Then I waited, and it wasn't long before I got a call. Well, no, it's certainly not a scam here, Declan, mate. Um, you know, we work alongside around 75 different solicitors across the UK. All right. You know, if, if our company you know, was in need of scam, we wouldn't be allowed to work alongside legal advisors like, like these guys here. The caller said he was from something called Affiliate Network Response Team, but there's no trace of a company with that name in the UK. And when I told him I might have a claim, he passed me on to a solicitor based here, at Andrew and Andrew Solicitors in Portsmouth. Hello, it's Andrew and Andrew Solicitors. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to keep you on the phone for too long. I'll just take a little bit of information from you and then we can get a case up for money. So who was it that had passed me on to them? We've discovered that the company who transferred my call have an office here in Basingstoke, in fact, in this building right behind me. They're called Compensation Professionals Network Limited, and they provide the details of potential injury claimants to solicitors. In fact, solicitors up and down the country will accept leads from claims management companies in this way. Andrew and Andrew confirmed to us that they have a referral fee arrangement with Compensation Professionals Network, and as part of that arrangement, my call was transferred to them. In a statement to Panorama, Compensation Professionals Network said they're not responsible for actually sending out the messages. They said that like many claims management companies, they purchase data from third parties. And they say they take immediate action if they become aware that any third party they work with has not marketed in a compliant manner. So the story of our text messages is really the story of a process. It's about companies working in a chain. The first generates the leads and then passes them on to a company which analyzes them 
and then passes the viable leads on to a personal injury lawyer. And the reason that this chain exists is because of referral fees. Referral fees are the engine oil of the claims processing machine. They make everything run smoothly, but now the government may take action. We see referral fees as being a very significant part of the problem wrapped up in the overall problem of the, of the compensation culture and the suing culture. Are you going to get rid of them? I can say that we are minded at the moment to move towards a ban, but we have to look at this carefully and look at the implications of that and how it should be done. But the government is going further. It's also changing the legal system. Tony Learmont is a no-win, no-fee personal injury lawyer based in Liverpool. Today, we're off to court. It's very straightforward, a rear-end shunt. Uh, and don't forget, they've admitted liability for that 12 months, almost 12 months ago in June. But when we go in, there is no opposition. The insurance company hasn't turned up, which means payday for Tony. He gets a 100% bonus if he beats an insurance company in court and the losing insurers have to pay it. So how much did you make out of this? Well, he assessed my base costs at uh, £3,600. So I get another £3,600. So the total fee that I got in this case was £7,200. Insurers say personal injury lawyers like Tony are getting paid too much and that the 100% success fee makes matters worse. But Tony says a simple solution is that insurers should pay out earlier and avoid court cases. If they'd accepted those figures in the settlement pack, the fee that I would have got would not have been £7,200, but £1,350. Under new government proposals, success fees would no longer be paid by the insurance companies. If you make a claim and you win, a quarter of your compensation could go to your lawyer. But if you lose, you could be liable for legal costs. We're going to take the froth out of the market by saying to, to claimants and their solicitors, you're going to th have to think a little bit more carefully as to whether to put that summons, to, whether to make your claim. Because if you do make that claim and you lose, you might be hit for the costs. Back in Dagenham, the Crash for Cash gang is gearing up for some real damage. Remember, the ringleader, Sadiq, has already drawn up an elaborate fiction for the insurance companies. The gang has taken our car to carry out the last piece of the fraud, the fake crash. What they don't know is we fitted two hidden cameras to our Volvo. For a few days, our car is parked up in a residential street. But then late one night, it's picked up by these two men. The man on the right is called Inam. We've seen him in the office with Sadiq and Fatima Haji. And she's here too. Bring it after three. It's almost midnight in a scrapyard in Dagenham. Look at the car in front. It's the Vauxhall Sofira we're supposed to have crashed into eight days previously in a street six miles away. It doesn't look like it's been in an accident because it hasn't, but all that's about to change. They check the damage is realistic enough to fool the insurance company. At this point, it should be job done. The fake crash has happened. But then, there's a surprise. Our Volvo is reversed back out of the yard, whilst the cars inside it are moved around. And in we go again. Ready? The Zephyr is gone, but now there's a Toyota Celica just in front. Watch what happens next. They've used our Volvo to damage a different car, clearly for another entirely separate fraudulent claim. This appears to be a large-scale operation. And this time, once isn't enough. It seems Fatim is not content with just organising the false claims. She wants to have a go at crashing a car. Let me do it. Let 
ये तो इससे विद मी ने जल्दी करो ना टाइम जाना घर जाना है बारह बज रही है But this is a job for an expert. Three crashes in one evening. And just to round it off, they set about our Volvo with crowbars. This is what they've done to our Volvo. Now it's time to find out about the real damage. Two weeks after the crash, a false claim has been filed, and our insurance company has let us in to see the fraud. So here it is, the claim. Take a look at how much they're claiming for. For damage to the Zafira, seven thousand seven hundred and forty-five pounds. There are also three different personal injury claims, one of which is for six and a half thousand pounds. Now it all adds up to twenty-six and a half. Thousand pounds. There may even be further costs and claims to come as part of this. But in fact, this process ends here. This claim will never be paid. We went to FG Rentals to ask Gazan Farsadik and Fatima Haji about the fraud, but we just missed them. Hello. Is Mr. Sadik here? He's not here. So we went to the yard where the crashes took place. They weren't there. But we did spot a familiar face. It's Inam who was there on the night of the crashes with his crowbar. I tried calling Sadiq on his mobile, but instead I got speaking to Fatima Haji, the owner of FG Rentals Limited. What? What? I, I want to talk to you about. I have some questions for you about car insurance fraud. She denied all knowledge of the fraud. And said, if we went back to FG Rentals, she would meet us for an interview. But there was a surprise in store. She hadn't turned up. Instead, she'd called the police. The boys in blue let us go on our way, but clearly our trail was at an end. So the lady who I spoke to on the phone said that she would meet us, and she called me back and said she wanted to meet back here at the rentals office. But when we got here. The police were here. She had called the police on us. I would imagine that at some point soon they'll probably want to talk to her. The authorities can only guess at how many gangs up and down the country are engaged in crash for cash fraud. Meanwhile, Panorama understands that next year motorists can expect another hike in premiums. Some of it will be down to criminals, but some of it because of a dysfunctional system under siege. From a pervasive compensation culture, one thing is clear: the rising cost of car insurance is no accident. Stay with us on BBC One for another new episode of New Tricks. Small Team, Bigger World starts the season on BBC Three about young people with inspirational stories, while BBC Four takes a fresh look at 20th-century British art.